Hello everyone. In this session, let me continue few more theorems in uh, unit four. So here is the theorem: If f n is a sequence of non-negative measurable function defined on E, and suppose f n converging to f and f n is less than or equal to f for all n, then integral over E is equal to limit n tending to infinity integral over E of f n. The minute when you see the statement, it just resembles like a monotone convergence theorem. But remember, it is not a monotone convergence theorem. Not only in that theorem, in each and every standard theorems, you have to memorize the theorem statement perfectly without missing any statement. I mean, without missing any single word, you have to write the theorem statement as it is. So, in for monotone convergence theorem, also you'll get all these terms except this statement. So, except this statement is extra in this theorem. Fine. So, you have to memorize all the theorem statement as it is. Fine. Now, let us coming to prove this theorem. So, so it is clearly mentioned in the theorem statement that f n is a sequence of non-negative measurable function which is defined on a set E. Moreover, this condition we have to consider in order to prove this theorem. So, let us prove here. Given f n is less than or equal to f for all n. Now, let us consider an elementary integral on both sides of the above equation so that you will get. So, when you are going to get elementary integral on both sides of the above equation, this is what we have obtained. This will be true for all n. Now, let me take limit supremum on LHS. So, I can write limit supremum over n tending to infinity integral over E f n which is equal to integral over E of f. Remember when you are going to take limit supremum of n tending to infinity, uh, I can write this as integral over e of f. Now again by Fitas lemma, as I already proved this theorem, Fitas lemma statement says that you have to write the statement again. What it says integral over e of f is less than or equal to limit, it is less than or equal to, I am sorry, and limit n tending to infinity, limit superior of integral, I am sorry, limit infimum of n tending to infinity, integral over e of f n. This is what the statement of Fitas lemma is. Fine. Now, I can uh, this, uh, let us take this statement as 1, let us take this as statement 2. Now, from equation 1 and 2, we can write integral over e of f is less than or equal to limit infimum of integral over e of f n. Again, which will be less than or equal to limit supremum. Why? Because limit infimum is always less than limit supremum as per the definition of limit superior and limit inferior. Infimum, so which is less than or equal to integral over e of f. Meaning is this function f is ranging between limit superior and limit infimum. So as I already told you, when these two conditions are holds good, I can write this as limit n tending to infinity of integral over e of f. So which is equal to integral over e of f. Right. So some, something like a less than or equal to b less than or equal to a. Meaning is that a is equal to b. So that is what I have applied the concept here. So that is what we are required to prove is. Clear? Now let me prove one more important theorem called Lebicu dominated convergence theorem. And again, you need to memorize this statement. So it is important as in the year 2016 and 18. So statement is if G is integrable function on E and F n is sequence of measurable function such that magnitude of F n is less than or equal to G almost everywhere. A E stands for almost everywhere on E and f n is converging to f almost everywhere on e then integral over e of f is equal to limit n tending to infinity integral over e of f n that's what i said every statements resemble like a same but the terms are where uh, we used in a statement is different so here g is integrable function fine so clearly mentioned g is integrable function and f n is less than or equal to g if that was the case we have to prove that this inequality I mean, this statement holds good. To prove this, first, first let us write down the given data. So, given magnitude of Fn is less than G. I mean, less than or equal to G almost everywhere. And G is integrable. Integrable function. Fine. Integrable function. So, as I already told you, when G is integrable and this condition is given, so I can write integral over E of Fn magnitude of integral over of e of fn will be less than or equal to, I will just split this statement, so I can write this as, um, I am sorry, it is magnitude integral over e of fn. Uh, as I already told you, the minute when you are going to split this statement, what I have done is, I have just considered integral over e of fn of magnitude. Since I am taking magnitude inside, so I can write this as less than or equal to magnitude of fn. And it is clearly given that magnitude of fn is less than or equal to g, thereby I can write integral over e of g. Now, as per the definition of integrable function, suppose if f is integrable, I can write integral over e of f is less than infinity. This is the standard definition of integrable function. Since it is given that g is integrable, therefore I can write this value is also less than infinity. 
fine meaning is that what i have arrived is integral of magnitude of integral over e of fn is less than infinity in the sense fn is also integrable the, as it satisfies the definition of integrability i can write fn is integrable over e and moreover what is the given since given that magnitude of fn is less than or equal to g implies that i can write magnitude of f is also less than or equal to g if it is true for n number of sets it is true for a particular case so if you have magnitude of f is less than or equal to g i can write integral over e of f elementary integral i have just taken integral over e of g further g is integrable it is given so i can write this is less than infinity as per the definition of integrability fine now this implies that magnitude of integral over e of magnitude of f is less than infinity what it satisfies it satisfies the definition of integrability therefore i can say magnitude of f is integrable so if magnitude of f is integrable i can say f is integrable so what i have proved is fn is integrable and f is integrable fine now let us consider let us consider the function g plus fn i'll just write it in flower bracket g plus fn and it is a sequence of non negative measurable function fine what i have considered is sequence of non negative measurable function g plus fn that such that i'll just write here such that it satisfies the condition g plus fn is converging to g plus f almost everywhere on a domain e then we can apply fetus lemma as it is non negative measurable function we can apply fetus lemma i'll just continue here therefore by fetus lemma i can write that integral over e of g plus f i'll just replace f with g plus f in place of f in a standard form of fetus lemma limit supreme of n tending to infinity integral over e of g plus fn i'll just repeat here fetus lemma state that integral over e of f can be expressed as limit superior of n tending to infinity integral over e of fn i'm sorry f only so fn here you have this is the statement of uh, fetus lemma in place of f i have written g plus f so that is the reason i have written here now since g and f are non negative measurable function it is already i uh, assume that g and fn are non negative i'll just write here non negative measurable function therefore i can split this as integral over e of g plus integral over e of f i have already proved this theorem is less than or equal to integral over e of g plus limit superior of integral over n tending to infinity integral over e of fn why because g is independent of n so i have taken limit superior for fn now i can write this as see this term get cancel i can write integral over e of f is less than or equal to limit superior of n tending to i'm sorry limit inferior i'm sorry limit infimum of integral over e of fn fine let us consider this as equality one why because we have all we have to prove it is equal but what we have proved is less than or equal to so we have we need to prove one more case that is greater than or equal to in order to prove those two expressions are equal so one expression is already arrived now let me prove the second uh, inequality so what i have assumed here the function is g plus F fn right similarly let us assume the function g minus fn it is also sequence of measurable function and it is in such a way that g minus fn is converging to g minus f almost everywhere on e whatever i have assumed here g for g plus fn i have assumed the same g minus fn fine so which is converging to g minus f almost everywhere again i am going to apply the fetus lemma whatever i have done for the first case repeating the same fine by fetus lemma g minus instead of g plus f i am going to put g minus f is less than or equal to in limits infimum of n tending to infinity integral over e of g minus fn fine again integral over e of g minus integral over e of f why because as g and f are non negative measurable function we can split it as g is independent of uh, n i can split this as limit superior of n tending to infinity integral over e of fn fine again uh, let me manipulate this i mean i'll just cancel this term so minus integral over e of f is less than or equal to limit supremum of minus i have here n tending to infinity integral over e of fn 
Now, one of the key point is that, remember, when you are going to remove this uh, negative sign, you have to change uh, all the inequalities. That is, whenever you have less than or equal to, you have to put greater than or equal to. Similarly, this infimum will become supremum. I can write this step as integral over E of F is greater than or equal to, since we have infimum here, I am going to change it for supremum. Why? Because I am changing the inequality by multiplying minus sign. Fine. Integral over E of Fn. So let us consider as equation 2. Now look at the equations 1 and 2. By comparing 1 and 2, it is just like a greater than or equal to b, a less than or equal to b. Right? So if both are true, we can say a is equal to b. Therefore, from 1 and 2, we can always write that integral over e of f is equal to limit n tending to infinity integral over e of fn. Why? Because here we have lim limit superior, here we have limit inferior. Since limit superior is always less than or equal to limit inferior. Limit superior is a greater term. Limit inferior is a lesser term. Limit inferior is always less than limit superior. Therefore, we can always write this inequality is true. So, from 1 and 2, I have concluded this. Fine. So, this is what the statement of Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem is. So, hence the proof. So, this is called as Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. Suppose that I'll just uh, it is just a note point. Suppose if I have a sequence gn, it is integrable function. Here the sequence is measurable function. Suppose if you are going to consider gn is an integrable function and fn is any sequence of measurable function. Fine. It is a fn is a measurable function and gn is an integrable function in such a way that magnitude of fn is less than or equal to gn. Then if we have integral over e of g is expressed as limit n tending to infinity of integral over gn. At the same time, integral over e of f can be expressed as limit n tending to infinity of integral over e of fn. So, this is the generalized Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. It is, it is anyhow it is not in your syllabus it is just given as a note point so remember it is Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem where fn is sequence of measurable function suppose if you have two sequence such that gn is integrable function sequence of integrable function fn is a sequence of measurable function which satisfies these two condition then if we express uh, that uh, integration of sequence of integrable function is as limit n tending to infinity of gn. Similarly, integration of measurable function is limit intending to infinity of fn. So, this is called as generalized Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. Clear? And the next concept is differentiation of integration of Dini derivatives. This is also only brief introduction is given for you. Only definitions you have to memorize. So, it is given, it is represented by d plus of f, f, f of x. Fine. So, it is defined as limit superior of n tending to 0 plus f of x plus h minus f of x by h. So, this is called as right upper derivative. So, when you have plus mentioned above d, so it is called as right upper derivative. When plus is mentioned below, it is right lower derivative. So, definition is remained as it is, but superior changes into inferior. That is, supremum changing supremum will be written as infimum when you are going to replace plus in this place. Similarly, when you have written minus in the upper part of D, we can represent it as left upper derivative. If you are going to put it in um, below D, we can say this as lower derivative or left lower derivative. So, everything will be same, only superior and inferior will be changing. Fine. And further, if both are equal, that is right upper derivative is equal to um, right lower derivative and right left upper derivative is equal to left lower derivative then it is called as a function is called as differentiable differentiable fine when do we say function is differentiable at x naught if all these values that is right upper derivative is equal to right lower derivative again that is equal to left, left upper derivative which is equal to left lower derivative if all these values are equal then we say given function is differentiable at a point x naught so you just memorize this definition fine uh, here is one simple example suppose if i have a function f which is defined as a set of real numbers in such a way that f of x is defined as magnitude of x so uh, positive 
I mean, right upper derivative formula I have written here as x tending to 0. Why? Because x naught is given as an initial value. So, we are going to get it as 1. So, if you are going to calculate right lower derivative, again the value is 1. Now, let me calculate uh, um, left upper derivative and left uh, lower derivative. So, you will get the same value. I am sorry. If you are going to calculate the upper derivative, you will get minus 1. But if you are going to calculate the lower derivative, if you, are you are going to get minus 1. Here, you can note that when you are going to calculate upper right upper derivative i'll just uh, write here see here right upper derivative value for this function is 1 similarly right lower derivative for this function is 1 but you can note that but you can note that left upper derivative value left upper derivative value is minus 1 again left lower derivative value is also minus 1 fine so you can if they are not equal right See here, they are not equal. These two sets are 1, these two sets are minus 1. So, as they are not equal, we can say f is not differentiable. Further, if it is equal to plus 1, in the sense all the values are e equal to 1, we can say it is uh, differentiable. Fine. It is just a definition you have in your syllabus. So, differentiation of integration or we can say differentiability of Dini derivatives. So, you just memorize these definitions. So, in the next, uh, almost 7 questions are completed. So, in the next session, I will be starting with one more important concept that is vital in covering lemma. Mm, uh, maybe one theorem, it takes more time. I mean, it is very lengthy. Anyhow, I will try my level better to convey. Thank you. Continue in the next session.